So by now, everyone has seen the declassified Pentagon UFO video, which is, of course, the very first video ever released on behalf of the United States government of a so-called UFO or unexplained aerial phenomena, as it's commonly referred to as. And there's a few things that stuck out to me about this, which in this video, I'm going to connect the dots on some really interesting pieces of information. First of all, let's just address the fact that this is just another example of the United States government lying to the public about the topic of UFOs. For example, they claimed for decades that the last time there was ever a program to research this topic was Project Blue Book, which ran from 1952 to 1969. But first, let's just acknowledge that this 2007 to 2012, $22 million program on the Pentagon, like, there's no way that that's the only program they've had. I don't believe it for a second. Second of all, what about Area 51? Remember how they lied to the public about that for so many decades? Anyone that talked about it was a conspiracy theorist and a, and a loon and ridiculed for it. That is until 2013 when the government themselves acknowledged that, oh yeah, it does exist. Now, let's also acknowledge that this story coming out now about this 2004 incident that these pilots witnessed in their F-18s was obviously a carefully orchestrated information dump. I mean, even, I mean, what are the odds that the New York Times, the Washington Post, and Politico would all release this story on the exact same day? In fact, the Washington Post themselves state that they had been conducting confidential interviews for more than two months on this topic. So why is this all coming out now? And this is making a lot of people think that this is inching towards alien disclosure, that the government is prepping the masses to get ready for it. And others will say that, no, this is simply top secret technology and it's a disinformation thing and a psyop and all everything else. Here's the bottom line that we all have to realize and focus on for a moment, which is the fact that we now have scientific evidence of a craft that defied the laws of physics and aerodynamics. In fact, it had some sort of anti-gravity technology to where it could just hover without any type of signs whatsoever of an engine, a rotor, wings, zero exhaust signature, no heat signature, and it was capable of accelerating instantaneously as far as the eye can see in less than two seconds. And we also have to keep in mind real quick that this happened in broad daylight. So when you saw this video through the IR infrared footage, uh, keep in mind that, yeah, this is in broad daylight and here we are, we only get just over a minute of footage of a five minute incident. I wanna see the rest of the video. I wanna see this thing hovering. I wanna see it skyrocketing off. I wanna see more. But not only that, they acknowledge that they have recovered material from crashed, unexplained aerial phenomena that is unknown to science. Metal alloys, so obviously created by intelligence, that doesn't exist on this planet. So, I mean, what are they telling us here? I mean, could it be any more obvious? This is basically a disclosure in of itself, but not everyone will agree on that. Some people are convinced that this is not aliens. And for some reason, so many people have this adverse reaction to the word aliens. Take, for example, Neil deGrasse Tyson. You may have seen his interviews on this topic, and oh my goodness. I mean, why he didn't take it serious at all. He laughed through the whole interview. He didn't even answer a majority of the questions and, and you know, sidestepped everything. He doesn't even acknowledge at all whatsoever the fact that it had anti-gravity technology, that it defied the laws of physics and aerodynamics. He doesn't even acknowledge the fact that they have materials that are completely unexplainable to science. And instead, he just laughs the whole thing off. And you know, this reminds me of a quote by Aristotle, which is, it is the mark of an educated mind to entertain a thought without accepting it. And the only intelligent thing that Neil deGrasse said was that, look, UFOs doesn't mean aliens. And yeah, I, I agree. It's like, duh. I mean, that's sure, of course. But he just ignores everything else. And by the way, for somebody who is so adamant that humans are destroying the planet, he doesn't even acknowledge the fact that we now know scientifically, that technology exists that can operate without a combustion engine, that can hover anti-gravity, instantaneous acceleration, and yet here we are filling up at the gas pump, spending all our money there, the incredible ridiculous prices of airfare, and obviously some sort of clean technology. I mean, regardless of whether this is from ETs or man-made, the technology now exists. It's out, the cat's out of the bag, we know it. It's been disclosed by the government. And this topic isn't even being discussed by any mainstream media outlet. Don't you think that's a little odd? And now that we actually have physical material that is unexplained to science, we know that the military is handling the whole thing. And we all need to keep in mind that there's not one single form of technology of any kind 
that has not been weaponized. Just think about that. And it gives credence to people that are saying that, look, this is just an excuse for the government to spend more money on space weapons. I mean, you've probably heard that the government is looking to create a sixth branch of the military, a space corps, to go along with the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, the Army, the Coast Guard. And this, of course, ties into orbital munitions, putting weapons on satellites, which would give any country just supreme offensive abilities. You wouldn't need aircraft if you could drop bombs from satellites. And this, of course, ties into what are called the rods of God, where they have developed a technology. Basically, you have solid pieces of tungsten in the shape of a missile, 24,000 pounds, by the way, that have no explosives of any kind and essentially is a weaponized meteor. I mean, meteors don't have any explosives, right? And yet they can destroy, well, a whole city, a whole planet. They can wipe out all of existence. It's all about that speed and the impact when it hits. So this is the frontier and it's illegal now, but this could be an example of them trying to push this forward. Now, something else that needs to be discussed and I've mentioned in multiple videos is the Pentagon missing trillions that are unaccounted for. The Pentagon has without a doubt cooked their books and this story ties into August and September of 2016 where every major media outlet covered this. Where essentially, the pen not essentially, for a fact, the Pentagon has cooked their books and this is straight out of their own mouths, by the way, look into it. But trillions are unaccounted for and without a doubt, it's clearly been utilized to embezzle or move probably hundreds of billions of dollars into black projects because again, this story in itself, the Pentagon UFO program was used with black money where essentially the senators, congressmen, even the president doesn't know where this money is being used for. So we have to acknowledge that with all this money, an untold amount that is unaccounted for, we have to accept the fact that maybe, just maybe, this 2004 video is in fact us. But then the question becomes, how did we figure this out? And it of course gives credence to the stories of crashed UFOs being found and thus here we are reverse engineering it. But do not be fooled into thinking for a second that this is simply just man-made because the same incident happened in 1952 and it's commonly referred to as the 1952 lights over Washington DC incident where two weekends back to back, the last two weekends of July in 1952, there was many different sightings and this was observed from two different radar systems at two different airports. It was witnessed by many different pilots, both military as well as civilian, including flight attendants and pilots on the ground as well as in the air. And in fact, they even had jets f chase down these objects to no avail as they were skyrocketing at incredible speeds up, down, in every direction. In fact, they were witnessed on these radars, documented at more than 7,000 miles an hour. So when I mentioned earlier with the government lying about UFOs, their, their story for this is that, well, maybe it was related to uh, you know, a weather inversion. That's why the two different radar systems saw this and it was just obviously incorrect. Well, ho hold on a second. So just never mind what all these pilots saw. Never mind the pilots that chased these craft and said that they skyrocketed into up at an incredible rate of speed and they were doing 90 degree turns at several hundred miles an hour. <laughs> Another excuse they had is that the pilots were seeing a, a ferry on the Potomac River headed towards Mount Vernon. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> First of all, of these pilots, yeah, they're, they're too dumb to know the difference between a plane and a boat. But the story is debunked in itself because in, during this incident, these lights traveled as far away as Franklin, Indiana, which of course the Potomac River doesn't even enter into Indiana. So no, it wasn't a ferry boat. But this is all smoke and mirrors, guys. They, they put out a little information to confuse people and just have put some doubt into the air and people just forget about it. But for no reason should anyone think, I mean, this is 1952. 12 years before the SR-71 Blackbird's first test flight, even seven, six or seven years before they even put it on paper. And then you have these crafts traveling at thousands of miles an hour, 90 degree turns at several hundred miles an hour. Like, no, there's no way that that was some sort of drone technology. And, and again, some people are saying because of this 2004 video that look, this craft was moving at such G forces that the human body could not possibly survive through. So others will say, oh, well, then it was a drone, which the pilots themselves thought that these were drones. But hold on a second. That reminds me, where's the rest of the footage of these multiple craft? All we see is one. You know, we need to start calling this UFO gate. We, we now know the government themselves have acknowledged that they have crashed craft that have materials of unknown scientific origin <laughs> that were defying the laws of physics and aerodynamics and had anti-gravity technology and everything else. And basically the same thing happened back in 1952. This raises all kinds of questions. Like, what does President Trump say about this? 
His press secretary was asked and she said she hadn't talked to him about it and she would get back to everyone and she never did and that was like, what, a week and a half ago? Which by the way, the whole freaking press room laughed their asses off when the, when the guy asked, oh, I have a question about UFOs. Like, haha, so funny, right? But we only have to look at what other presidents have stated about this. Barack Obama in his first term said he had no knowledge of UFOs. And then when he was asked in his second term, he said, I can't reveal anything. Like, how hard is it to say, uh, I don't know? Or even President George Bush said the same thing. I can't, or I'm not revealing nothing. Or even Bill Clinton stated that when he was president, he attempted to receive information regarding the topic of UFO, UFOs and was access denied. So who's running the show? Like, did I misinterpret the Constitution here? Who is really running things? It's obviously not the president. I mean, we've long known this. There's something like a dozen security clearances higher than the president's. And the same thing with this black money, that there's information that exists that the president isn't privy to. Guys, who's running this show? So yeah, President Trump, if you are truly the outsider that you claim to be, we need more information. We need to see videos. This is, again, guys, call this UFO gate. They acknowledge in themselves that there's at least, what, four minutes additionally that we haven't even been seen, and who knows how many other incidents they do have documentation of. This is where people come out and say, oh, well, the masses aren't ready for disclosure. Humanity can't handle this. Like, no, <laughs> maybe you can't handle it or anyone that can't handle this information, then okay, go live under a rock someplace while the rest of humanity progresses because it's 2018, the world seems to be getting crazier. So how have being told lies for so long, whether it's by our government and politicians, the news media, various religions and certain aspects of the scientific community, how has that been working out for us? And I should also mention corporate America and lies that the CEOs and anything to make a dollar. How have these lies been working out for us, right? It's time for us to know the truth. The truth is what humanity needs. But again, the bottom line is that we now know beyond a reasonable doubt that this phenomena is actually real. And so we need to start taking it seriously and asking new questions. We need to know what the president thinks about it. And the public has a right to know more information than this. This is ridiculous. So. Everybody, UFO gate, put the word out. <laughs> the more the masses make a big deal and stink over it, the sooner we'll get answers. That's how things work. So I'll leave it at that, but leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are, as well as share other information that you're aware of involving this topic, but I'll leave it at that. I'm Jimmy, this is Bright Insight. Like and subscribe, and uh, yeah, more videos coming soon. Take care, everybody.